breaks because of and welcome to Truth Talks. I'm Ryan Cameron, radio host, actor, and comedian. And here I have my co-host and truth teller, Brie Renee. Hey, y'all. We're so happy to be on this new show. Truth Talks, Brie is going to, you know, tell you what it's all about. Okay, y'all, I'm here to put y'all up on game. This is a show that takes place in the hour after happy hour. You know that first sit feel. Okay, I'm Brie Renee, straight from the A, and you may have seen me on Black Girl Stuff, on Revolt, or heard me on the radio. Yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and seeing you in the video. True. True. Let me introduce the rest of my panel of hosts who are all shaking up the industry. First off, uh, the legendary Willie Moore Jr. Family, listen, just in case you didn't know, Willie Moore Jr. on a TV show. Okay. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and, uh, many of you all know me from my syndicated radio show, the Willie Moore Jr. show. And, of course, I made appearances on BET with King of Business. But tonight, it's all about the truth. And let me introduce our fifth member of the show. <laughs> Her name is... Belisha. Belisha the Bell. Okay. Shout out to all the people who <laughs> dove into the comments yesterday and said that that was the best name. We really appreciate you. Listen, it's all about truth talk. Flat out. Yeah. And next up, Dr. Cheyenne Bryant, who you know from all of her viral interviews, and now she's one of our truth tellers. Mm -hmm. What's up, Truth Talks fam? I'm Dr. Cheyenne Bryant, y'all, your favorite doc. You might have seen me on Team Mom Family Reunion, and like Ryan King said, a lot of my viral videos with Cam Newton, Nick Cannon, B. Simone, and it goes on and on and on. But anyways, I'm here with my Truth Talks family. I'm going to bring y'all raw gems and the truth. And I'm going to go against everything all of my co-hosts says. <laughs> Stay tuned. That is not always true. <laughs> but you know what? You are a part of our next little piece because in case you missed it last night, mm -hmm. uh, the episode, we do a famous FaceTime segment where we have somebody call somebody on the FaceTime. And it, last night it was, uh, you know, Dr. B, and she called legendary TV judge Joe Brown. And he went viral when he said this about his take on the candidate for president. So let's go back and look at this. I want to ask you this. So we had a big, big discussion about blacks for Trump. What, just tell me, what do you think it is that Trump is going to do for blacks that the blacks don't have an understanding of? We don't identify uh, his opponent, who we think is a fake, one, mm. two. You know, we are into this man thing, and the party she represents has been trying to call us toxic, and we're not buying that. And the other thing is the president is, by the way, the commander-in-chief and a man for a war chief. Mm. Yeah. Got it. And economically, <laughs> economically, real quick, we got 30 seconds. Economically, what do these going to do for us as black community economically? I'd rather have a billionaire who's proven that he can manage a big business as an executive rather than somebody that's never led anyone. And when she was in California doing her thing, it was a... So in the story. Judge. She didn't get voted in. She didn't win a primary. <laughs> right. She didn't even go through the proper caucus process. Got it. Judge. So, yeah, hey. Judge, I love you. Thank you. You're in the A. I'll see well, you soon you. in a minute. And thank you so much. I love you. Hey, I'm going to do dinner, too. All right. Absolutely. Love you, JB. All right, dear. You heard it from Ciao. Judge Joe Brown, y'all. That's true talk. You Looking heard it. Good. Yeah, and Not as you can see, you know, shot. the way that seatbelt was going across his neck, <laughs> it was cutting off the circulation to his brain. And that's why some of those thoughts that were coming out were coming out that way, as he was very much concerned with going out to dinner. Okay. And so we just want to know, how, how, how was dinner with that? Ryan, stop it. <laughs> stop it, Ryan. <laughs> Don't start with me, Ryan King. Well, you know, y'all were in the comments. That was, they were going in on you. Oh, I'm so happy they went in in the comments because as y'all can see in that clip, I couldn't even keep my composure. I'm holding the chair, rocking back and forth because I wanted to go in on him. Like, that was the most misogynistic answer I had ever heard somebody say they were, reason why they were voting. Like, we need a woman as the war chief. First of all, we don't really want to go to war, but if we do, have you not seen Game of Thrones, some of the best queens and people who have led revolutions have been women. Like, what makes him think that a woman can't lead us through a war? And she probably would be thinking better than a man would anyway. <laughs> I was I was so disgusted with that. I was like... You were mad. Was, you were heated. I was so heated. I was so mad the show was over, Ryan. I wanted to go. We needed a segment just for that. Bree, y'all got on me about Phil, Dr. Phil, and then he came right at the end, and I said, listen, it just proves my point. Trumpers are Trumpers. Yeah. No matter what. 
You're right. <laughs> let's right. just move on. Man. All right, it's time for our very first story, so let's get into it. Yeah, speaking of Trump, um, Puerto Rican superstar Bad Bunny, he showed his support for Kamala Harris to his more than 45 million Instagram followers moments after a speaker made an offensive joke at Donald Trump's Nazi, I mean, um, New wow. York rally, wow. sparking outrage. Let's take a look. You know, there's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean mm. right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Listen, mm -mm. that wasn't humorous and that wasn't comedy. That was straight sick and straight racism, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Point blank. Distasteful. Period, okay. Both Harris and Trump have been competing for the Puerto Rican vote especially in Battleground, Pennsylvania, where about half a million Puerto Ricans live. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how Trump is looking over there in Pennsylvania, but my, my Puerto Ricans, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're going to remember this, as, yeah. as same way they remember, you know, Hurricane Maria and, and Trump coming there and throwing paper towels to them. You know, and they were very uh, uh, upset about it. I mean, I had Rosario Dawson on. She was like, we are going to go in, and we're going to remember this. Uh, uh, along with the mass deportation thing, this is not going to be... I think it's going to come back to, to haunt him at, at the polls. I really do, you know. Mm -hmm. But will this help Harris with the young Latino male voters, a demographic that has gravitated toward Trump? Yeah, like you said, Ryan, I think they definitely are going to remember not only the paper towels, but now you have people up here. And even though Trump didn't say it, you have someone who's representing you in your campaign speaking like that. So they definitely going to remember going to the poll. I, as a as a brown as a black and brown person, right. I, you know, I feel like that's our they're our allies. So I'm gonna remember going to the poll because if you feel like that about brown people, you definitely feel like that about black people. Well, let me tell you something. You're a beautiful black woman. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I keep telling people, Trumpers are Trumpers, and they're going to be Trumpers no matter what. Right. But Puerto Rican people, I want to tell you, you are a strong nation. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I hate about the word disrespect is many people don't know what respect means. Respect means to back look, re-back look spec, right? So you back look. He disrespected, and that means he didn't look back at the history of this amazing country. You have produced some amazing people like Jennifer Lopez, um, with my boy Ricky Martin, yeah. Yeah. and the rest of them. And I just left there like at the beginning of the year and I was able to download so much. So I'm so sorry, but you got to make a strong choice, okay? Yeah. And I believe that you're going to make that, that right choice, especially my men out there, all right? Moving on to sports, Shaquille O'Neal is facing backlash for making inappropriate comments about WNBA star Bro, Angel Reese, her little short show, on a podcast, <laughs> unapologetically <laughs> Angel. And uh, he's getting some backlash for it. Yeah, let's take a look, Willie. Well, to add more fuel to the fire, Shaq discussed imagining the Chicago sky forward dunking a basketball in a pair of those little bitty short shorts. Mm -hmm. And Reese appeared to, like, roll her eyes. She laughed uncomfortably, and she was like, oh, my God, okay, okay. Like, she was trying to calm him down, mm -hmm. but he kept, like, going. It's like he couldn't read the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do you think that Shaq was being a, a creep and, and sexualizing Angel Reese? I mean, I know Shaq. And I know he's a harmless guy. He's a he's a jokester. And I didn't I didn't take it like that. I really didn't. I mean, after I kept you know watching the comments, which of course is where everybody goes to drop their hate bombs. Yeah. I was like, you know, if you know the individual and you know how they're trying, he's just trying to do something that's gonna first of all, you know, help the league. And I definitely don't think he was looking to Angel Reese in a, in a sexual manner. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing, y'all know that I know Shaq really really well. Mm -hmm. We're extremely close. Um, and Shaq is very strategic. First of all, he is the one that fully supported and damn near got Angel Reese her Reebok contract, okay? Second of all, he's strategic. And so I know him, he was saying that in a way to try to get her podcast to really go viral and get a lot of attention to it. And yeah. obviously it worked. So big dog, good job. It worked, Shaq. And you did what you were supposed to do. Now people are going to take it weird and take it, take it that it's sexist, and it probably was, but I know he's strategic and I know how he does. He supports me in ways that people would think is weird, but it works. Shaq always saying something weird. I definitely think it was weird. <laughs> I definitely think it was weird. And if you ever been a beautiful woman, you get hit on a lot. I think she tried to, she, and I know she felt the same way because you try to be like, okay, uh -huh. you try to do that. I'm not being rude, but I'm trying to move past it. So move past it. That She took it the same way. But I do feel like Angel Reese herself definitely over-sexualizes herself a lot because every time we see her, her booty out.
So maybe put some clothes on and maybe he won't be doing all that. But we got to move on. Let's move on to the Cowboys cornerback, Trayvon Diggs, who had a heated exchange outside the locker room with reporter Mike Leslie in Dallas. Listen, following the Cowboys 30 to 24 loss to the 49ers, and I'm going to say loss again because I'm an Eagles fan. <laughs> this, <laughs> okay, this gave Leslie all the smoke for posting on X. What is Trayvon Diggs doing on this play? Mm. Well, you know, first of all, we played the Cowboys on, on Sunday, uh, my Atlanta Falcons, and they will continue to lose. So he will have something else to talk <laughs> yeah, about after Absolutely. they come in here and, and understand what's going to go down in the bench. You know Tom what I'm saying? You so, gotta, uh, gotta give him a bell. Uh, and as a public no. address announcer, <laughs> it's going to be third down for the Cowboys <laughs> a lot, and we're going to do what we do. So the reporter, he asked Diggs to talk about it more, to which Diggs replied, these nuts. Talk about these nuts. <laughs> now, who's in the wrong here, Diggs or the reporter? So, you know, this is my thing. I feel like as a professional, and that's what they're supposed to be, he's supposed to not come at the reporter like that. But as an athlete and as a human, I feel like, shoot, he's off of a loss. He, he didn't have a good game, so what else do you expect? I feel like he ha does have the right to be human and say, you know, you're talking to these nuts. But as a professional, again, I think it's a part of him to kind of be like, address it professionally or don't address it at all. I feel like the reporter was just pushing, pushing, pushing. They and I do be feeling like the athletes, like, you can't do what I do, so don't be questioning me about what I could have did better. Trayvon, don't forget, $97 million contract. Hold your horses, that champ. Part. <laughs> that part. Really, <laughs> that part, Willie. That part, Willie. Hey, up that next, part. the election is a week away, and we're all panicked. Ah, what have the Dems been doing for the last four years? You don't want to miss this when we come back. I was a quarterback at Ardaway High School. College first round draft pick during the football season, I would stop eating. But I didn't know I was depressed. We didn't have any education behind what mental health was. I started to learn it starts here first. If this is together, I'll be better as a father and as a husband. We have to redefine what being a strong man is and heal, love your mind. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation, but blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, please donate. We need heroes now. Visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. And welcome back to True Talks, the show where no topic is left untouched. So let's start with the last on, the latest on next week's historic election. Mm -hmm. Family, we are in the home stretch. <laughs> and it's getting tighter Finally. and tighter, especially in the battleground states. I'm just going to be real. Y'all might not like it, but we may be getting another Trump presidency from these early polls. Boo! Boo tomato, nah, tomato, nah, tomato, nah. tomato. But listen, tomato. Listen, but tonight, <laughs> we're joined by author and esteemed academic my dear brother from another mother, Mark Lamont Hill, he's really going to break it down for us in layman terms so we can understand. Mark, talk to us, brother. Hey, Mark. Man, first of all, it's good to see y'all. Y'all all, all looking good going? as always. I, I, I'm frustrated right now because what you just said, Willie, is 100% right. We could be seeing a Trump presidency. I'm going to say could. We're going to come back to the could. Yeah. But if we do, 
we got some some blame to give out. You know, uh, when Joe Biden was elected in 2020, there was a really good chance he was going to be a one-term president. Not because he was going to lose the next race, but because he was old as hell. And <laughs> a lot of people say he ain't going to make a second term. He, he kind of said on the low at the beginning, look, I'm a one-term person. I'm going to make sure that we have a strong uh, country, strong economy, and then I'm going to pass this thing over to somebody else. If you know you're going to be a one-term president, just like Donald Trump has to be a one-term president if he wins, your vice president should be somebody that you think can win the race. Um, Biden, I'm not sure how confident he was initially, and I think that's why another reason why he, he was going to run for re-election, that and his, you know, his biscuits wasn't all the way brown <laughs> by the end, of, the end of May. So then Kamala Harris pops up, and it becomes a question of, well, we love Kamala Harris, we like Kamala Harris, but in 2020, she was almost in last place. So can she win a national race is the question that people have. Now, I think she's getting held to an unfair standard. I think mm -hmm. we're being too hard on her in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But if she does not win, one question we got to ask is, was she the best option mm -hmm. to go against a monster like Donald Trump? Right. Now, you know, Mark, I got to ask you, first of all, we've seen, you know, Kamala bring out every entertainer known to man. She's brought out, you know, now Michelle is in Atlanta tonight. Uh, Barack was just here. What is it about the fact that she is not connecting with the voters? As I saw somebody, I think Joe Rogan said he was waiting on her to become human. Why do we love so many other people, but she's not resonating with people? What, what, what's going on with that? I, I think some of it is race and gender. I mean, you know, America mm -hmm. likes to say we want to have a beer with our president, which is dumb as hell. I don't want nobody that I can relate. I don't want nobody like me being president. I don't even know where my socks at right now. I want somebody who ain't <laughs> okay. nothing like me to be president. You know what I'm saying? But we want this relatability thing. And a lot of times, because we look at it through a male point of view, um, we don't. We, we said the same thing about Hillary. We said the same thing about Kamala. Suddenly, somehow women are never relatable. We never want to have a beer with the women. So I think part of it is just, is just identity stuff. Um, I think some of it is she got a tough act to follow. Joe Biden, when he was in his prime, was a very good politician. He also inherited a lot of goodwill from Barack Obama, who was a once-in-a-generation politician. Whether you agree with him or not, he was a once-in-a-generation politician. Before him, Bill Clinton was a Democratic president. Again, a political genius. Y'all remember him on, on Arsenio playing the sax. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to follow acts like that. Kamala Harris is not unlike why I know Kamala Harris. I've spent time with Kamala Harris. She's cool as hell. She's actually a very good person to know. Um, but I think voters aren't necessarily giving her a fair chance. And I think some people, and you heard that with that dumbass jo uh, uh, Judge Joe Brown clip, some people just don't know what's good for them and, and don't want a woman, a woman as president no matter what. Hey, Mark, who do we blame for not having another viable candidate? I think it's a couple people. You know, um, on the low, According to my sources, when Joe Biden decided not to run for re-election, um, there were a lot of people in the Democratic Party, powerful people. Uh, one of them, I won't say who it is, but it rhymes with Shmarak Obama, said, I don't want, we, we should have an actual convention vote. People should vote for who should be the nominee. We shouldn't just give it to Kamala Harris. He didn't not want Kamala Harris. He just thought we should vote for the person who we wanted. Like, I don't know, democracy. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. so I think the fact that we just gave it to Kamala Harris for me was a problem. Not because I don't want her to be the nominee one way or the other. All the candidates, you know, for me are, one, are about the same on the Democratic side. But because the people didn't choose her, I think a lot of people feel like, hey, that wasn't my person. Not one person voted for her in the primary. And so I think some people are uncomfortable with that. And I think that that's not, uh, that's not our fault. That's the powerful uh, honchos in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. They did not allow everyday people to choose the nominee once Joe Biden stepped aside. Why won't she let Joe Biden do any campaigning? I mean, he's been, you know, very much absent. Why didn't she let him come out? Is she afraid of, you know, him saying something that is going to throw things off the rail? Yeah, like he might be like, hi, good night, welcome to Truth Talks. My <laughs> yeah. name is Willie. <laughs> like, he's like, tired. Mark, don't do that. He's taking a nap, <laughs> Joe right, Biden. Mark? <laughs> Right. He is, he's taking a nap <laughs> right now. Joe Biden is asleep for two hours. I promise you. They're going to wake up you and know, feed him no, his I, applesauce. Exactly. Exactly. The, at, the, at the end of the day, Joe Biden wasn't going to win because people said he's not up to speed. He's not strong enough. He's not the person who can convince the unsure voter whether or not to vote for him. And so if he's losing steam and got kicked off the trail, you... It, 
you know, you don't really want him writing your letter of recommendation. And so I think it, it's better to have Obama. It's better to have uh, both the Obamas. It's better to have um, Bill Clinton, with it, although he's getting older and it's tougher for him to hit the road as well. And even these Beyonce uh, appearances and Kelly Rowland appearances are doing a lot for her. But at the end of the day, the people who are not sure about Kamala Harris, Joe Biden's not going to make them sure. Yeah. Mark, I got to ask you this. What candidates do we have? Who stands out, in your opinion, a person who probably could have went head to head with Donald Trump? Well, you know, if you'd asked me three years ago, I would say Andrew Cuomo, but them yeah. scandals start scandaling. Yeah. Um, and, 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 oh, and men be knocking, we knock ourselves off of, of, of candidacy out of contention with our bad choices uh, with the lower part of our body. Um, but if you look at who's viable right now, Gavin Newsom to me, the governor of California, is a, was a stronger candidate. I don't think he's better than Kamala Harris. I don't think he's smarter than Kamala Harris. I don't think he's more experienced than Kamala Harris. But America is like American Idol when it comes to politics sometimes. We want a person who looks like a president. Gavin Newsom is handsome. Um, he's charming. He's a good talker. And he checks all the political boxes. He believes the same stuff all the rest of them believe. So Gavin Newsom, I think, could do much better on the campaign trail because black people are going to fall in line regardless. But there are some white men who are only going to vote for president if it's another white man. Mm -hmm. Fact. Do you think that if Kamala Harris loses that we may never have another female run for president? It's an interesting question. I mean, we would have been 0 for 2. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing, it's the same thing you wonder if, like, if a black person had made, have got the nomination and lost. Mm -hmm. Like, if Obama loses, do we get another black person at the top of the ticket? Mm -hmm. It's an interesting question to ask. I do think we will get another woman. I just don't know how soon. And I think it's much more likely that that woman will be on the Republican side. Mm. Mm. That's huge. Yeah. Now, who yeah. would that candidate be? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Nikki Haley. Nikki oh, Haley. Yeah. Haley. Yeah. So she, she checks a lot of boxes. She's South Carolina. Um, she has all the conservative bona fides. And um, although her real name is Nimarata Randawa, she's happy to, to, to pass as a white person. So they get the minority box checked off, but get a white person in real life. It's kind of a perfect combination for them. Mm. Mm. So when you check the boxes of who the, like you said, the perfect uh, combination is for a candidate for president. Okay, we don't want to have a beer with them. They got to look presidential. They got to be sexy. Like, uh, wh what is it that has to do with, with governing and politics and, and doing something for the people amongst all those boxes, Mark? Bro, the last president we elected before Biden was a reality TV star, fake billionaire, whose biggest claim to fame was probably getting body slammed at, 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 at WrestleMania. WrestleMania. I mean, we clearly don't care about the things we should care about. We should be asking questions like, who will fix our roads? Come who on. will fix our national infrastructure? Who will repair our economy? Who will uh, build the education system? Who will keep us safe? But we don't ask those questions, not primarily. The first thing we ask is, do I like him? Right. Do I like her? We're not dating. Right. We should be picking the person who can do the best job. Do you think that's by design, or don't you think that might be on purpose? Because as a millennial, I feel like we all have felt like, well, they just are throwing, they're distracting us. They put these people out here, like you said, and try to make us like them so that we can get distracted from the policies that really affect us. Yeah, I mean, the biggest distraction is, having, is not having you realize that they're kind of the same. Democrats and Republicans are different wings of the same bird. I'm not saying that there's no differences, but a lot of the differences we play up to as part of the, the drama of the election. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're in a celebrity culture. We're in a celebrity society. We love people if we've seen them on TV before. So part of it is politics, but part of it is the bigger issue in America in general, which is everything is, is a spectacle. Everything is about celeb life. Mm -hmm. So even the politicians we want, we want them to look not like a politician. We want them to look like an actor playing a politician. I mean... There's, there's some, I mean, look at who wins, you know, look at who's marketable, look at what we're drawn to, look at the issues we debate and discuss. Um, a lot of it is that, and it is by design, because if, if we're distracted and aren't picking the people that could actually change this world for the better, then the powerful stay in power whether they're Democrats or Republicans. Mm -hmm. So what if the Democrats lose? I mean, who is the next candidate? Do you, what do you think about somebody like uh, our senator from Georgia, like John Ossoff? What do you think about him? I don't see it. I, I, I don't see. I, I don't. I don't see John Ossoff uh, being in the mix. I think that there. I think when it comes to, uh, and Obama's an exception, you know, but when it comes to Democrats, a lot of times, you know, they want something different. You know, 
Uh, I think now they want to say who's the proven leader. So they prefer to have a governor rather than a senator. Mm-hmm. They want somebody who's actually run a state, an executive. Um, so I think Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania could be somebody. I think Tim Walls, the current VP nominee, could be somebody. I think Gavin Newsom, governor of California. I think it's much more likely that you're going to see a governor uh, get the nomination than you will see a senator. Um, and Georgia is an interesting state. And look, mm-hmm. it's not impossible. But the last time we had somebody from Georgia get the nomination was 1976 with Jimmy Carter. Um, and I'm not sure that that plays now in the 21st century. Well, we got to thank Mark Lamont Hill for joining us, uh, giving us a great insight yeah, as well. Thank you. Thank Mark, you, we Lamont. appreciate you, man. We see you next time. I thank appreciate you. y'all. Love y'all. Thank Love you. everybody Love except you. Joe Brown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Period. Up next, Thanks, people Mark. really like to share their personal business, even when you don't ask. <laughs> so stick around and find out. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation, but blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, please donate. We need heroes now. Visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. I was a quarterback at Hardaway High School college first round draft pick during the football season, I would stop eating. But I didn't know I was depressed. We didn't have any education behind what mental health was. I started to learn it starts here first. If this is together, I'll be better as a father and as a husband. We have to redefine what being a strong man is. And heal, love, your mind. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. We are back on True Talk tonight, and we're getting into this business of celebrity oversharing. <laughs> now, Shannon Sharp and his infamous getting busy live IG, of course, <laughs> went viral. Mm-hmm. Okay, so come on, Shannon. Had a lot of comments about that. Now, about Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. They made t-shirts of that. <laughs> Lord have mercy, y'all leave old Shannon alone. I think Shannon defending himself only made it worse from all these social media allegations myself. To yeah. be honest, I think he was defending himself against, you know, <laughs> them saying he might not be straight. But yeah. with two straight men here, do you feel like you should go to certain lengths to establish your straightness? Never. I think, yeah, with all the stuff that he's been going through, I think because obviously, if the if the if there's smoke, there's fire, mm-hmm. and obviously somebody, his team or somebody's in his ear and say, we we need to do something about this. So. Uh, I mean, we've all gone on. We go on IG Live before every show. You, yeah. It take a lot to go on IG Live. You don't just throw your phone on the bed. Yeah. Whoa, uh, Michelle. Yeah. Right. Come on now. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Let me I, ask y'all this, though. How much of oversharing on social media is about power and needing to control the narrative? I think I think that can be true, but if you live by the applause, you're going to die by the That's applause. Right. Mm-hmm. So here go the thing. With Shannon Sharp, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> so me, I'm a heterosexual male. I'm going to be honest with you. I think... I think if God made anything better than a woman, he kept it for himself. Come on, somebody. <laughs> uh, but, but what I'm learning now 
is that like you are so overshadowed by the things that you think that you deem important. Like at the end of the day, these people are gonna forget in two minutes. Yeah. At the yeah. end of the day, they only got like two minutes and then they're on to the next thing. So I'm not gonna waste my time trying to show you who you I go. am. The people who know me know me. Yeah. And I think a lot of times celebrities take on that pressure. Here's the thing, I took on that pressure too. Wanting to be something, wanting mm -hmm. everybody to know. But as soon as you do something wrong and you fall down, right. whole world against you. You know what I decided to do? Say, forget them people. I'm going to yeah. be myself. And I think no. Shannon has to take that same approach. And people on IG, they don't care what you're doing. They care what you're doing. Right. <laughs> right. I love but it. But the fact is, is like Shannon Sharp, like he's made a very big brand for himself. His yeah. show has done numbers. I don't feel like any of us care whether you're straight or not. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't yeah. think that's part of his brand. Nobody, no, I don't know about other uh women, but we not looking at you like, ooh, I'm watching Shannon Sharp because he look good. We not watching. <laughs> so that's why I was going to ask you that. We're For not both watching. Of do y'all find Shannon attractive? Well, I think personally, whether he's gay or straight, no one's privy to that. I think whatever he does behind doors, he should do it and be okay with mm -hmm. it. I know he brought his Do stylist. you find Shannon Sharp attractive? I don't think it's attractive. I think he's feminine for a man, but I do think okay. that no. whatever way he goes, what I think no one's privy to that. You? It's some, it's, it's some about that genetic quality. Okay, let's watch this video then, and we come back. We got a video, we got a video. Check this out. I'm very disappointed in myself. Um, not for the act. Um, I think there are millions and billions of people uh, of consenting age that engage in activity, but to have your most intimate detail on the audio to be heard, I'm disappointed in myself. Nothing on the internet is real. Come on, and man. This is what I do have to say. Y'all know <laughs> that he brought his stylist, right? Who I think is amazing. Uh -oh, and his, I know his about stylist him. is gay, but he's he's and he's amazing. I'm all for it. He brought him to a basketball game courtside at least four or five times. And not until people start calling Shannon gay did he stop bringing him. And then the tape came out of Michelle, 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 mm -hmm. Michelle. Absolutely. And you the man, you the man. No. So I just still feel like in today's climate, it's like Gay is so embraced. People are gay everywhere. Right. It's not even an issue like it used to be back in the day. Either don't say anything about it, Shannon, or just keep it in your bedroom. What's exactly. I agree. I think the problem with this is, or why he felt like he had to challenge it, is one, he comes from an older generation where they always had to present masculine, always had to hide if they were homosexual behind closed doors. And he's an athlete. So, you know, an uh, ex-athlete at that. You know what I mean? They That's their manhood. That's that, you know, we in the locker room. And, you know, maybe he's thinking he'll lose people coming on his show or being able to comrade with other ex-athletes if he's really who he say he is. But to answer your question, Ryan, no, I don't find him attractive. Yes, I do feel like he got a little sugar in his tank, but wow. I ain't judging you. Like you said, I, and one thing about it, my um, shout out to R.I.P. to my gay uncle Vaughn. He passed. <laughs> but my gay uncle told me as a woman, if you ever have any doubts that that man is gay, he gay. Believe it. And I'm telling you. <laughs> Shannon I feel it in my spirit. Listen, Shannon Sharp, the biggest hustler ever. I seen it as a big publicity stunt. The moment that he did that, he right. came out with pills that can make it real That's in true. the bedroom. That's and he true. made some money. Yeah. I think the numbers that they did, I don't want to start quoting numbers, but they did so much. He didn't let the news come. He took it to his platform as a YouTube with myself, I thought it was the best strategy yeah. ever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, like, who he sleep with is his business. Yeah. But if he coming out with a pill, what better marketing plan than to hear you doing using the pill? Well, Come you, on. Okay. If you got a stylist, that means that somebody's going to be saying, like, uh, you know, uh, La Roche for yeah. Zendaya. Like, where did you get that? Where did you get that? We want that. Oh, where did she buy that? Who wore it better? Ain't nobody never said that about nothing Shannon had on. Ever. Not one time. Never. Not one time. Never. Like, where did you get that Wait, bag you when you got out that Wait, SUV Ryan, that and was going into the liquor store? Oh, your first, stylist right, gave you that? Why he, that's why he brought him to the game, to make sure when they ask, the stylist is right there to answer and say, this is where we got it from, and no. this is where you can get it from. It said no one. No one. Said no one. <laughs> we didn't never ask what he was wearing. We don't care, because like no. you said, it's never been that fly. But sometimes his purses be cute. <laughs> <laughs> I like some of them purses you be wearing, Shannon. You'd wear some of the purses. Some you of wear? them purses be cute. Okay, That's a cute little crossbody. Let body. me ask Willie and Ryan: Would y'all wear a man bag or a purse, or do you now, or have you? Well, so I'm gonna say this: I I'm from Atlanta. And I'm from Zone 1, which is like a, a really uh, tough hood. neighborhood for Bankhead. <laughs> and I'm going to keep that blicky on me. So, yeah, uh, the guns I carry is Army gun style. So, yeah, it ain't going to be in no man purse. It's going to be in a, you, uh, you don't even want to know. Backpack. You don't even want to know. Backpack. You don't even want to know how I get down. So, okay. yeah, I got something on me. 
But is it as in a we purse? Speak. Is it in a purse? No, it's in a, it's in a, it's got a holster in it. It's, it's built. It's on Amazon. You can Google it. So it's not a purse. No. No, you I got my little Gucci clothing? situation. Funny story, my daughter, because I had used to wear that thing until oh. I stopped putting it in my <laughs> I put it in my phone. Wow. Now I got everything. She was like, Daddy, um, that that's your purse. I was like, <laughs> no, 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 baby. This is this is a man bag. She's like, no, 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 it's okay, Daddy. Mommy purse, daddy got a purse. Oh <laughs> my god. But yeah, I used to carry my, my bag because I like I don't carry security and I'm always in the neighborhood. So I keep my little I keep my uh, smoke pole right in there with me, and it's good. It's a little Gucci situation. I stopped carrying it now because I lose everything. But yeah, I wear it, but I didn't like the orange one though. It had to be like neutral yeah, colors. Yeah. Like you got to have like a black or a brown. Yeah, it was like, it was one that. more than too much. It was too much. Yeah, yeah it's I, just I, a little. I, short. I couldn't go on a date with a man carrying a purse. I, I have. I've been on a date I with wouldn't. a man carrying it's a, a purse. purse. I have, but it's I wouldn't. A purse. I have, it's but a man I wouldn't. Purse. I couldn't do it again. Okay, let's talk about again about the oversharing. Do y'all feel like you've ever posted something on social media that you come back and regret it? Absolutely. Yes. What what happened with you? Absolutely. I overshare. Do you watch my stories? <laughs> I overshare every day. What was the last thing you did? I'm always sharing a meme or yeah. like say I get into it with my friends or something and then you get on Instagram, it's like Instagram heard you so they pop up the perfect meme that go with it and then you post it and now you and your friend got to talk. Well, why are you sharing that on social media? So yeah, I, yeah. I do do it. It's therapeutic. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I do. don't feel ashamed about it. Yeah, I, yeah, and mine, my, I mean, mine was years ago. Y'all gonna get on me and I don't care. It was years ago and um, I had a thong bikini on and my branding team mm -hmm. and my PR was like, Dr. Bryant, take it down. If Oprah wouldn't post it, you shouldn't post it. And at that moment, I said, oh, we in trouble then. There's a lot of things I'm going to post that my mom would not the post. The same person but that I took is asking down. I took to it down. see Shannon Sharp Stylist is asking to see Oprah in a thong bikini. Ooh, that's the same yeah, bitch, yeah, yeah, which is. is nobody. No, it's nobody. Yeah, definitely. So I took it down. And, and from then, I just, I post a bikini, but not a thong or too much. I don't think that's over Sharon, I thought it though. was too much. They thought, my, my, my team thought, like, that's way too much pull back. They think a lot of things I do is too much. Hey, the question becomes, okay is that. it still archives? So you can like un it's undo it. It's, it's archive. archive. You can just kind of undo archive. it. Week 63, <laughs> guys are on their way. Dot com. <laughs> I don't think that constitutes as oversharing, though. Yeah. Really? No. Over what does? Oversharing is like when you talk about something private, like that's a normal behind closed doors conversation. Like me and my friend getting into it, and I post about what we going through. Like something that if you got somebody number and y'all right. getting into it and on social media, that's oversharing because we could have called each other and had that conversation. I, I think oversharing. Post sexy is just thirst for me. Uh, is on, on, on the social media post where unfortunately somebody is about to transition and they are in the hospital oh, and they holding yeah. grandma's hand and it's like, you know, to me it's like that is one of the most private matters ever. I don't understand why the first thing you got to do is like, and then you post it and be like, please don't bombard me yeah. with the comments. Uh, Just pray for yeah. me, cousin, <laughs> please. Yeah. Oh, what is going yeah. on? Like, it's way too much. If you start doing all that, then the, the stuff that you post, you're going to get the reaction. But don't be mad when people yeah. are reacting to like, what's going on? You yeah. know what else, Ryan, I think is completely oversharing? When parents share when they're when they're disciplining their kids, like when they're whipping Ooh, them with a belt, yeah. I, I, like I hate that. It, I it like just that it makes me boil. I'm like, why would you embarrass your child like this and have them on here getting a butt whooping? Mm -hmm. That is just that's too far. Private too matters. Far. Yeah, both yeah. of those are and private it's traumatizing matters. Traumatizing to the child, like yeah. that's secondary trauma to me. Yeah, I'm watching it and I'm like, I'm triggered. By just watching the beating, absolutely. It's too much. And then oversharing when you in the, when you in that delivery room too. I just seen too much going on. Ooh. I was like, bro, that's your baby. You keep that to yourself. I don't want to see your your wife with her nose spread out like this right here. And it's a C section. This big old wow. curtain right there. Ooh, I texted my homeboy. I was like, bro, too Take much. It just a little yeah. too much. She gonna kill you when she get. Let him <laughs> watch the baby so off down. first. Like, relax, we don't need right? to see that milky looking Rinse baby. Rinse the baby yeah. off. Rinse yeah. it off. <laughs> yeah, don't show that part. That's a bit too much. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. So have y'all ever done something like one of the things I always think about is like people who post relationships and they end up having to go back and scrub all the pictures down. Listen, Are I'm you quick to post? Uh oh, uh, what? Why you why are you hiding your face? No, I've only posted two, which was most, both of my fiancés. If they're not my fiancés, <laughs> I'm not look, look, we got shame because they posting girlfriends and boyfriends. I've only posted well, two Ray people. Well, was married. Both were my oh, wait, fiancés. wait, wait. Oh, or maybe not. No, I was. I was married, and so oh it's always God. a clear indication, like when every, like people go on your page. And they looking to see if it's a picture together yeah. and it's totally scrubbed and then it's like okay cool in two or three weeks it's gonna come out and I remember when I had to clean it all up yeah. Yeah. and then everybody was like ooh it's trouble in paradise 
And that's really, really tough because it also affected my children too. Mm. Because mm -hmm. it's like when you're going through that and you're such a public couple, right. yeah. everybody's looking and then my children had to go to school and then she's on social media like really airing out all the business. It was it was hella embarrassing. Right. But I put my chin up, chest out, and it's still kind of embarrassing when you go into this prestigious school and everybody kind of know your business. And like the children are terrible when it comes right. to that. Like I hated the turmoil and the craziness that my children had to overcome. They've been resilient, that's but that's lot. just really, really tough because it was be, so public. The kids be like, your daddy unfollowed your mama. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, What's going on in your house? Right. You know I mean? yeah. like, oh. Well, we got a lot more to get into, so don't go away. We got more Truth Talks when we come back. Like, you know your daddy unfollowed your mama? Your mama was going crazy on your daddy last night on the show. I was a quarterback at Hardaway High School. College first round draft pick during the football season, I would stop eating. But I didn't know I was depressed. We didn't have any education behind what mental health was. I started to learn it starts here first. If this is together, I'll be better as a father and as a husband. We have to redefine what being a strong man is and heal, love your mind. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation, but blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, please donate. We need heroes now. Visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. Here's to the things that can keep us safe those we use all the time with hardly a thought, those that are silently standing by to save our lives, and now those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. And we are back on Truth Talks. Let's continue our conversation about this celebrity oversharing. And not just celebrities, but, you know, people uh, who are non-celebrities. First, Shannon said it was hackers. Hmm. Then it was a messy accident. You know, uh, what's really the truth? Man, that man know he need to just know better and just get on out the way and make your money and stay on out the way. Yeah. <laughs> For real. For real. Yeah, just like Cardi B and Offset should know better, uh, each accusing each other of infidelity on IG. Remember this? And, I, and it's so crazy that I think that that's enough. It's not enough, honey. It's just not enough. And you know what's so funny, too? I find it funny that I think that they could on anything. Mm. Mm. Yeah, what about all that drama that played out on social media with Safari and Erica Mena from Love & Hip Hop? Right. I don't know if y'all saw that. She was climbing over fences and begging for child support payments. It got messy. Yeah, and then Safari... Right, had the nerve to post a, post a jaw-dropping media of Erica attacking him in front of their children. Yeah. Seriously, that and, was that one was too much. And, no, totally. I think that I think they go way too far. Them and uh, and Krishan and Blueface, they just go way yeah. too far. I just feel like once you have kids, this social media needs to be definitely boundaries implemented and y'all need to be able to to have awareness of what you're posting. I don't care if your kids are infants. At some point they grow up and they're going to be witness to what you're posting. Yeah, and Erica and Mina Safari have been going yeah. at it for way too long. Yeah. It's abusive. It's toxic. It's dysfunctional. It's just, it's time for them to just split co-parent or don't co-parent. Yeah. Just get away from each other. As a millennial, I ain't gonna lie, I do be here for a little oversharing sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it can be ther therapeutic, like I said, <laughs> and also you, sometimes you do want people to know how you genuinely feel because like y'all said, they <laughs> yeah. always gonna make their 
their assumptions anyway. They're going to comment. They're going to say what they... They're going to come up with their own narrative. So sometimes you want to set the record straight and let you know from the horse's mouth what's really up. But you want but, to know... You want people to know how you feel on social media? Sometimes, Not with your therapist, not with your friends, not you with your family. You do me to told them, but y'all going to ride media? with... media? Your therapist and your friends going to ride with you anyway. You no, need your therapist remember, ain't supposed to ride Bri, with you, Bree. Bree, give me your hand. No. Listen, 80% of the people don't care. <laughs> right. The other 20%, they glad it's you. Yeah. All right? So, so I'm divorced, and uh, it's not always the easiest. And the truth is, I don't get why people want an audience watching their whole family and marriage Please. deteriorate. Right. Like, yeah. that's tough on everybody in the family. Going through divorce and being a public... Like, so in my niche, like, we are the couple. We got a relationship book. We're touring. Right. Everybody's excited about it. We're empowering couples. 2020... The pandemic hits, you're stuck at home, and you realize that there's some real big differences in opinions and thought processes. Mm. The hardest part was, is I'm a guy who had never met anybody in my biological family. And then in 2020, mm. you meet everybody. Mm. So it was almost like a bold trying lock. I realized that I didn't have to, you know, be somebody's doormat anymore, and I decided to file for a divorce. Wow. Right. Now, that is something that is hard privately. Before, yeah. to be all over the blogs, all over the people just talking, it was really, really tough. And then looking at my children, which was my main concern, to see what they had to go through at school, and then just the embarrassment that we did to the, for, for the kingdom. Yeah. So if you're out here and you're preaching one message, and then the truth is you're trying to live up to something that's not necessarily all the way true, yeah. and then you finally take that mask off, I mean, my money even dropped, because of mm -hmm. course I'm out speaking every single week, doing right. what I'm supposed to do. Nobody would have known if we could have just kept it on the inside. I know, but, people, I know people that are divorced but, right now, and their parents don't know. You know, people in their family don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like being in the public guy, I had a very public marriage. I had a reception in a nightclub and mm -hmm. 2,000 people showed up. <laughs> yeah. And I fly. came in holding, the, you know, my bride's hand. But I've been divorced for eight years and the same story that, you know, gave me the trumpeting for the marriage. I remember they put that picture up and they had that squiggle line down the middle. Right. And they also had a video off of YouTube of me declaring my love for her like years side earlier. And everybody had a comment to say about all that. And that was, it yeah. was very tough. And so I want to say, uh, when, I caught, when I caught off my wedding, I wore my ring for a whole year. My little sister had to say, sis, if you want to date, and you want to meet people, you got to take the ring off. But I, I wore it because I didn't want to deal with the scrutiny yeah, of, you, oh, you, you single? What happened? I thought y'all were getting married. Oh, people were still saying years later, Ryan, and y'all, oh, wait, aren't you married? Mm, and I yeah. had to remember, like, oh, I wore my ring still for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, no, it didn't work out. But I didn't have to deal with all the conversation or reliving the fact that I caught off a wedding. Mm -hmm. I'm processing a broken heart, and I'm trying to get through this. And every time you ask me, I'm reliving the fact that I just left a whole situation. So didn't, so y'all never wanted to just come out and make a statement and let it Hell be done? No, I, so I, feel so like I, did, I did make a statement. That's what I'm saying. So, so, I'm, so I made a statement, and of mm -hmm. course I did it politically correct. It's okay. unfortunate that, that we're not oh, uncoupling. Oh. You know what I mean? And it was really, really good. And then somebody went live. Well, let me tell you what really happened. I remember that. And I was like, you know what? That's just unfair. Yeah. So it was just really, really tough. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think I, I think you should definitely like speak out and tell your side because if you don't get to tell your story, somebody else gonna write it and they're gonna write it wrong. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, where do you draw the line if it's us and not the media? putting it out. I mean, we just saw this recently. This happened today. Uh, Tom Brady's ex-wife, Giselle, she is pregnant by the jujitsu trainer, trainer. And she went on and she said, we call Tom with our kids to tell him first. Really? At 44 years old. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Nothing. But I, I'm having a baby. Having but a baby. I've also learned sometimes if you don't say anything, things pass on a lot quicker. When yeah. you start to react to it and respond and feel like you have to create your own narrative of what the truth is, it just stays longer. If you don't want to be in it, whatever you don't water, die. So don't water it. There's been things that came about me all on the internet and as soon as I stay silent, that thing passed right on by. I feel like that's true about certain rumors, but like I was in a public relationship. Now I wasn't married, but we were very, very public and I did post him a lot. And a lot of people would like a lot. It was it was cringy. <laughs> a lot. A lot. It was a lot. It was cringy. But people would like tag him on my page and, and tag me on his page even after we had broke up. So I came out one day and I just said, Y'all stop tagging me. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not with that man no more. Leave oh. me alone. And then people did start leaving me alone. And you know who else did that? Sherelle did with Ocho Cinco. Yeah, she she did said, y'all stop, stop tagging, tagging me. That man is single and he is 
free for all you ladies. But she did have a little shade at the end because it was like, ooh, I'm going to slide into his DMs. And then she said, I hope you don't catch nothing. Like, what's that mean? And that's like, you should have kept, that was oversharing. You should have kept that in between y'all. No disrespect to Tom Brady, but, you know, I'm glad that he got that because the day that I came out with my announcement that, hey, things aren't good, the numbers was going up, boom, Tom Brady come in and give his announcement and overshadow my entire announcement. You faded to the background. Faded all the way to the background. So, Tom, keep making headlines so I can fade to black. There you go. Yeah. All right, so, you know, we've talked about oversharing. We talked about, you know, public relationships and talk about things that you posted. Do you scrub your page? When it's over, Absolutely. you take down every picture. And next thing you know, it's like Bree, Jim Flo, get my gym on. Yeah, oh, I've never just deleted all the stuff. So on it's, my page. it's it's oh, are your fiance still up on your page? No, he deleted the first. No, the two of them. The first one's in the archives. The what second the one is deleded. Yeah. Is Hugh Hefner up there? He never, uh, he never, well, he, <laughs> you know, he never what, didn't have me on his payroll. You got to delete enough. it. You got to <laughs> delete it. Out of respect for one, like you said, so people don't keep asking you about it. But two, right. for the next yeah. person that you date, I want y'all to know I'm single. So what's up? You there don't you go. So worry. slide into the Bree Hive DM. She, <laughs> she's single and ready to mingle, all right? And that's Hello. what it is. Up next, we're about to call somebody famous. You don't yeah. want to miss this when we come back. Yes. Slide yes. in your DM. You're trying, you're trying to catch on the truth. No, I'm not ready to mingle. I wonder if you know that I want the best for you. But how long will you fight solo? I wonder if you know that we can get help. I'm not wondering anymore. Love your mind. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation, but blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, please donate. We need heroes now. Visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Welcome back to True Talks. Now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Each of us will have uh, FaceTime, one of our famous friends, and see how they feel about something that we discussed. Tonight mm -hmm. is me. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's all right. go, Ryan King. Going, Let's Ryan. go, Ryan King. I, I don't know. So, Ryan, who you calling? What, what I, how do I do this? Okay. I go on, and, and then I go to my... Swipe up. I, okay, swipe up. Go on my phone, and then uh, let me see. Uh, now we got to right, teach let me Ryan see. how to FaceTime. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> Man, OG, OG Tricky Iceberg. Right. I'm just it's gonna, called you FaceTime. Know, it's called is my phone coming up on the. Right, I'm on your business, so I don't see who you're calling. Who is it? Who you calling? calling? I hear it. Oh, I can see it. it on my it's phone. dialing. Why isn't it not coming up there? Oh. There I am. <gasps> hey! 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 I'm outside. Bone Crusher. Club and what's they think I'm hey, what's going on, family? Nice hey, teacher. I'm good. How you feeling? Hey, we got the legendary Bone Crusher, one of the what's greatest that? to ever do it, man. Uh, B BC, man, talk about. Oversharing. We talked about it tonight on the show with social media. What are your thoughts on oversharing and putting too much stuff out there as a celebrity? That's uh, for me, it's a no no. I don't do it. I share just enough exactly. so they can understand a little bit that I want to get. You know, I think that um, a lot of times, 
you give too much, you get what you don't want. Come on. Back I love it. Turn. So it's, uh, I try my best to just make sure I keep what I want to myself and what I want to give, I give it to them. Well, we yes. got, you know, we got Willie Moore Jr. right here. What up, bro? You got <laughs> Brie <Brilliant Day. laughs> And you got Dr. What's B up, of the Doc bro? Squad, you know. Hey, hey, what's that? You know, it's like family, man. You, you know everybody on here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Willie Moore in Vegas. That's how I saw Willie was in Vegas. Y'all was in Vegas doing what? Uh, I was riding around a scooter. Ve Willie had the boys with him. Oh, he had the family. Don't over the family trip Ryan. there. Don't over <laughs> He said he was at the Rhino. He was at the Spearman Rhino. He was at the Rhino. He was at the Spearman Rhino. He was hanging. Listen, man, when you are, are out there on that stage, I, I've seen you perform a million times. The energy that you bring, mm -hmm. it all, I mean, you just went on stage with Jelly Roll. Talk about the fact that, you know, your, your ability to cross over with all of your music, it resonates with no matter who it is, black, white, uh, in another country. Why do you think that uh, Never Scared has just resonated with so many people for so many years? Cool. Love that um, get you fired I think it's, I I think it's uh, got a lot to do with the perseverance of what the song is really all about. Mm -hmm. It's about never quitting, never giving up, always keeping yourself going forward, letting people know that it, when it comes to whatever you want to do in life, you got to do it. You ain't never scared. So you, anytime you, mm -hmm. time when I, I wrote the record, I was in a very weird space. So I had to either do what I wasn't going to do or do the right thing. And I did the right thing. And that'll be just what people feel from it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, you know, you know, a lot of things about it, though, Ryan. I think it's a lot to do with me because I'm great, fantastic, and outstanding. No. Yeah. Don't it, Ryan. It is. Now, now, Wait, now. Ryan, it is because every time I <laughs> sing or hear that, it bring out my inner bone crusher. Like, I just feel like you. <laughs> like, you you put yourself in that track. Yeah. Now, it, it, right. it is true. Yeah. Now, we know the calmer, you know, uh, laid-back bone crusher, but... Can you talk about this rumor that they said you were somewhere on the trip and you got out of the car and you pulled a tree out of the ground? What? Yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, I did that. Uh, me and Banner was uh, riding, and I and I got a phone call about uh, my ex-wife uh, told me that the baby that we were having wasn't uh, going to make it. So I, mm. I guess that's my reaction to it. And uh, I uh, I got out the car to pull over. Mm. I got out and you know, I pulled the tree out the ground. Sorry to hear that, wow, by the yeah, way. Man. Sorry to hear that. You know, we, we talk so much, man. I mean, we, we share memes and we, we joke and laugh all the time. And, and somebody asked me this again today. They said, why is it whenever somebody performs Never Scared, it's always their verse and Bone Crusher is available, but he's not out there on the stage? What, what, what's going on with the remix, man? Hey, man, I, you know, my thing is, man, I, I, I don't know why that's happening. Uh, I'm usually not in Atlanta. That might be one of the main reasons. And the other reason is that, you know, every once in a while, man, you got to let people know that you're part of something great. So those two guys, you know, uh, you know, uh, okay, as we know, they, 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 they are on the record. So they perform the record the way they like to. I, I appreciate it because it keeps it out there. And it keeps people understanding that life is about greatness and, and getting to the energy. Yeah. Uh, but me, me, me and you, Ryan, you know, we talk about it all the all time. time. <laughs> it, oh, but it, it, it's um, it, for me, man, I just think that, uh, you know, uh, God bless them for uh, keeping the record out there. For me, man, I, I appreciate all the love, you know, it's, and that's what it always will be and what it always will be forever, uh, no matter what the cost is. Well, I mean, before we get out of here, I wanted to ask you two things. First of all, have you voted early? Have you made up your decision on who you're going to cast your vote for? And secondly, uh, can you talk about the new project? Because you got some new music that people need to know about. Mm. Yeah, um, I haven't voted yet. I'm actually voting tomorrow. That's crazy you ask me that. Uh, I always early vote every every election that's locally and uh, federally uh but i'm i'm voting for kamala you know i'm, I'm voting for the, I'm that's voting. right black man <laughs> yeah i ain't voting for trump <laughs> <laughs> if i got two between her and him i'm choose her right, right. Mm. but um um uh what was the second question you asked me? what about the music man plug the music oh yeah the music man, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah yeah the music the energy the power <laughs> yes it's a yeah. boy. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, I got a new single coming out called Locomotion, produced by Avery Johnson, who produced Never Scared. Uh, we back at it, so uh, it's going to be a fantastic groove, man. It's a mixture of southern soul, hip hop, 
uh, energy and power. You gotta yeah. let me be on the behind you on the backstage. I ain't never scared. What? You do. Yeah. Don't crush it. Don't crush it. Can you sing you a little bit of it? Can, can ball, you hit that? Can you give us, give us a little verse? Give us, give us the, the beginning when when you come out there and you stomp. You know, you just give a little, a little piece I'm of it. Of, of what? Which, which I'm, part? I'm never scared, man. This is when you first come out. Attention! Attention! Yeah! <laughs> Y'all give up a bone crusher. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yo, that's all the time we have for tonight. We will see y'all all tomorrow uh, for more real talk on True Talks. And, and like Bone Crusher said, man, and you know, we ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. Yeah, yeah. 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 talk the truth. Yeah. Yes. Swear y'all.